Okay, thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Atkins, Chair of the East Point Planning and Zoning Commission. At this time, I will call our June 16th, 2022 meeting to order. Staff, would you please sound roll call to establish a quorum? Yes, Commissioner Mark Fields. Commissioner Patricia Lovett. Here. Commissioner Greg Fan. Commissioner Will Miller. Present. Commissioner Joel Presley. Commissioner William Bryant. Commissioner Joseph Fields. Here. Commissioner Legina McKnight. Here. And Commissioner Sean Atkins, Chairman Atkins. Present. Chairman, you have a quorum and I do believe that William Bryant is on the line as well. So let me check really quickly to allow him to speak because he's on by telephone. Okay. I'm asking for him to unmute, but I'm not receiving anything back. Okay. But I do see he's here by phone. Okay. We will need, and it looks like Ms. Solomon was able to get on as well. Um, we will need um, for Ms. Weir to hear his voice so that the record will reflect that Commissioner um, Bryant is here. Commissioner Bryant, could you please let us know when you're able to unmute? Is he the number 9819? Yes. Okay, I thought that that was his number. Um, Commissioner Bryan, if you can hear our voice, if you would please unmute so that the record may reflect that you are present. Okay. We will, we have a quorum and we will move forward in Commissioner Bryant. And um, it looks like we've also been joined by Commissioner Fan. Commissioner Fan, could you please unmute and just sound present? What, what's happening with this thing? I was on a few minutes ago when you called a roll and that asked me to join in the palace. What would that happen on uh, the other night? What's happening with this thing? What, why, why am I not able to get in at first like we used to? I'm asking yeah. a question. Technology is has its own <laughs> mind sometimes. All right, all right. <laughs> also, Mr. Also, uh, Mr. Fan, I found out that we get two emails. One email is for general information, and people can join who are not on the who are not on the commission. Okay. And then there's another a, another email that goes out that says panelists for the Zoom meeting. That's the one you have to use in order to log on. Okay. Well, I'll look for that in the very near future. Thank you so very much, Mr. Fields. All right, yes, right, thank welcome. you for that clarification, Commissioner Fields and Commissioner Fan. by the sound of your voice, we will have the record to reflect that you are present as well. Um, Commissioner Bryant, again, um, we do have a quorum, but when you are able to unmute yourself, if you would please sound present so that the record can reflect that you are present also. Having gone through roll call and established a quorum, this meeting shall be in session. Our next item on the agenda is a moment of silence. And so at this time, I would like to ask all of our participants, our commissioners, our staff, uh, our court reporter, and those who are joining as attendees to please join us um, in a moment of silence. Okay, thank you. Our next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a moment, I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Is it a second? second? It has been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fields, is that correct? Yes. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, that we adopt the agenda as presented. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. 
Our next item on the agenda is the approval of our May 19th, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve our May 19th, 2020 meeting minutes. Motion to approve the May, May 19th uh, minutes. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, that we approve our May 19th, 2020 meeting minutes. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Our May 19, 2020 meeting, meeting minutes are approved. Commissioners, the next item on our agenda is old business, the William, Willingham Corridor Study. Um, if Mr. John Tooley is present this evening, we will have a presentation by Mr. Tooley and then we will act on this business. Uh, Director Smith, is Mr. Tooley here this evening? Mr. Tooley is not here um, this, this evening. He let us know um, early this week or maybe later this week that he would not be able to attend, but we did confirm him for July. So hopefully he will be able to attend in July. All right, thank you. Um, that will conclude our old business for this evening. So we'll move to agenda item six, which is new business. We have five cases on new business. Um, which is actually old business because they are deferred cases. But um, nevertheless, we will hear them again. Our first case is 2022 U as an umbrella 001 02. The applicant is Marshall Connor Bryan. Staff, would you please sound the caption for just this agenda item? Chairman, in reference to item number one, case number 2022 U 001 02, the applicant, Marshall Connor Bryan. Property is located at 2218 Pinehurst Drive. The applicant seeks a special use permit to install a prefabricated structure to be used as a habitable accessory structure. Case type is a special use. Okay, excellent. And Director Smith, just so that I am clear, um, these items were deferred from our regularly scheduled April meeting. Um, we did hold public hearings at that time. Have we also advertised for public hearings this evening? We did not re-advertise, so we are, we, you're welcome to move forward. As far as I know, you may want to defer to the attorney um, for that, but okay. we did not re-advertise them. We're moving forward uh, via de the deferral. Okay, thank you. Um, I do believe that we are also joined by Ms. Wiggins, our attorney. Madam Attorney, um, if you would, please pipe in. I am absolutely open to having a hearing Again, okay, on these. there are, okay, just one second, Ms. Wiggins. Commissioner Bryan, could you please sound present or here so that the record may have to reflect that you're with us? Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Weir, did you get that? Okay, I can't see Ms. Weir. You got that, Ms. Weir? I did, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, Ms. Wiggins, if you would please opine. I'm very happy to hear these again. I think that we've met our legal requirement of holding the public hearing in April. However, if there are any citizens or any other bodies present this evening who would like to speak to these cases, if it is the will of this body, I am open to having a public hearing on these cases this evening. Or comment, I should say public comment. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay, so um, if, if I understand it correctly, we did have the public hearing on these deferral cases at the last meeting. So you're right, we did meet the statutory requirement to have public hearings. So um, I would agree with you that we should not open it up for another public hearing. But if you want to take, and I'm hesitant to even say take public comment, which is, um, it, it achieves the same thing, but it's, not the same thing if you understand it is just hearing from the public I don't know I, I think at this point my recommendation would for the board to go forward with the vote and not public hearings um or even a public comment actually because that legal requirement has already been taken care of and to open it up again um would seem as if we're trying to circumvent um what we've already done all right Thank you so very much. Okay, commissioners, um, you have um, heard from our attorney. And um, as I mentioned before, um, we have had our public hearing on these cases at our regularly scheduled April meeting. Um, and uh, we have met that statutory requirement as just stated by our attorney. Uh, at this time, I will have staff to please sound its recommendation. 
And then after we've heard staff's recommendation, I will then entertain a motion. If there is any additional information that you would like to hear any comment from the public on this, then you may ask direct questions of the applicant or any person um, who is present who can answer and respond to your inquiry. Staff, your recommendation, please. I'm, I'm sorry, and Chairman, in reference to uh, this case, the applicant, Marshall Connor Bryan, the zoning um, is R1A urban residential. It is a special use permit application, which is seeking to install a prefabricated uh, structure to be used as a habitable accessory structure. The zoning, as you can see here um, and stated previously, the zoning is R1A urban residential and is surrounded by urban residential. The future land use map designation is traditional urban neighborhood, as you see on our future land use map. And this is a site plan um, presented and you can see that the guest house is located right beside the parking pad. And staff has recommended approval and that the in the condition is that they must comply with section 10-2130 of the habitable accessory structure portion of our zoning ordinance. Okay, thank you, Director Smith. Commissioners, you've heard the recommendation um, from staff, this agenda item 2022, U is an umbrella, that's 001-02. It is a special use permit. We're not the final arbiters for special use permits. Any motion that you make should be in the form of a recommendation. At this time, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I recommend that we uh, accept staff's recommendation of approval in this case. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, that this body recommends approval with the condition as stated. Is that correct, Mr. Miller? Yes, I'm sorry about that, with uh, conditions as stated. And um, Commissioner Joseph Fields, your second still stands, correct? Correct. Okay. So it is the recommendation of this body, moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, this body recommends approval of case number 2022, you as an umbrella, that's 001-02, applicant um, um, property at 2218 Pinehurst Drive, special use permit, all in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it, this body recommends approval. Thank you. Our next agenda item is 2022 Vias and Victory-002-03. The applicant is Mr. Harold Buckley. The address is 874 Cleveland Avenue. Staff, would you please have the caption for this agenda item? I'm in reference to item number two, case number 2022V-002-03. The applicant, Harold Buckley, property located at 875 Cleveland Avenue. The applicant seeks a four-part variance to include a driveway variance, an entrance variance, facade fenestration variance and a curb cut variance. Case type is a variance. This case is deferred from the April 21st, 2022 uh, meeting. Okay, just so that we can perfect the record, um, Director Smith, I think you said 875 Cleveland Avenue. My agenda says 874. 874 is, is correct, thank you, sir. Okay, no worries. Um, okay, and staff, would you please sound your recommendation on this agenda item? Um, this case is, um, as stated, the property located at 874 Cleveland Avenue. It is a variance and the applicant is Harold Buckley. The property has a current zoning as C1M, which is neighborhood commercial, C1, excuse me, neighborhood commercial, and the applicant is seeking a four-part concurrent variance. Next slide, please. Technical difficulties, sorry.
The zoning map, as you see here, the property is on C1 neighborhood commercial. Next slide. The future land use designation is redevelopment neighborhood. And the site plan here is shown. 3,200 square foot staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval with conditions to include a landscape plan and lighting plan to show enhanced landscaping around signage resembling renderings provided to staff. Condition number two, uh, base should be composed of masonry brick and stone uh, nature resembling and providing uh, to staff and additional variance is approved for the Cleveland overlay district. Okay. Commissioners, we've heard staff's recommendation for case number 2022B as in victory-002-03. This is a concurrent variance. This body is the final arbiter. Um, so your motion needs not to be made in the form of a recommendation. Um, and at this time, I will entertain a motion on this case. Commissioners, let us not all speak at once. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Miller. Case number 2022V-002-03. Um, I recommend approval of the uh, variance with uh, staff conditions. Okay, so we don't need a recommendation. So I'm taking it that your motion is to approve. My is motion that is to approve with staff okay. conditions. Okay, staff's conditions. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Miller. Is there a second? Second, I have a question though. Sure, Commissioner Fan. So the motion is to approve um, the concurrent variance for 874 Cleveland Avenue, case number 2022B as in Victor, as 002 03. Um, motion is made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan. Commissioner Fan, you have the floor. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. I have a question of staff. Um, the last condition of the song uh, was the overlay district. Explain that to, to us in terms of uh, the Cleveland uh, Avenue corridor in terms of the overlay district and how that works. The Cleveland overlay district has certain, um, certain architectural guidelines and we just wanted to make sure that the variance is in congruency with that. And once it comes in for site development, staff is going to review the plan based on the Cleveland overlay and all of the architectural designs. So we just wanted to make sure that even though this board may grant the variance that they would um, uh, be sure that they, they still are to abide by all of the architectural design guidelines in that overlay district in spite you, of getting the variance. Thank you so very much. I just wanted to make sure it was clear so everybody know that there are, there are, there are standards they still have to, to meet in terms of the, the project. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. Are there any other comments, questions, or concerns? Okay, I have a few. Um, Ms. Um, Solomon, can you go back to the slide that um, displays the conditions, please? Okay, uh, Director Smith, in reading the conditions, you specifically referenced um, a couple of things. One is, um, Number one, um, the landscape plan. And it indicates that the applicant has provided staff with a landscape plan. Do you have that plan available? And I will ask the same question of number two um, regarding the, the composition of the, the envelope materials of the building, the building's envelope. Do you have those that you can share with this commission? Let me check. Um, and while you're looking for that, um, I do see that Mr. Buckley is on. Mr. Buckley, um, do you have those handy? If so, are you able to email those in quick fashion to Director Smith? Or would it be quicker for Ms. Solomon to share screen with you so that you may show the commission those things, the landscape plan and the building materials for the building's envelope? Uh, I can share, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. My name is Harold Buckley, 2849 Paces Ferry Road in Atlanta, here on, on behalf of Romo Pata, the applicant in this case. Uh, Mr. Chair, we do not have a detailed landscape plan um, to share with you at this point. We still have not prepared that. I believe the intent of the, um, 
the first condition is to require us to provide that to the staff prior to uh, submitting for permits uh, when we get to that point. But I do have the elevations that I can share with you. Okay. Is that the intent, Director Smith? Is it in fact that staff does not have a plan that has been provided, but the intent is to have the applicant to provide to staff a, an enhanced landscape plan? That is correct, sir. We need to reword those two sentences in condition number one and two. The renderings to be provided to staff. Okay. So in that case, because the motion that is currently on the floor is a bit different from that. So in that case, we will need to um, amend that motion. Um, Mr. Miller, Mr. Fan, Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Fan, um, as you've heard, let me, get, let me get through my last and then we can go back and clean this up. Um, I believe that condition number three um, this is something that I brought to the attention of staff when the case was first presented to the commission, and it has specifically to do with parking. Is that correct? Um, no, sir. The condition number three is, I mean, it's it's worded in a, in a way that probably is confusing, but the intent of condition number three is for um, the applicant to abide by the all of the the um, all the of the requirements, requirements of the Cleveland okay. overlay. Okay, all right. So what we have on the floor now is a motion to approve with the conditions as presented by staff. However, now that we've gone through conditions one, two, and three, the totality of those conditions, we're now understanding that we need to do some work with those conditions. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So commissioners, um, we can do this one or two ways. Um, we can either withdraw the motion um, and then we can work on these conditions and then establish a new motion with the conditions as they should be. Um, so I can entertain that, but Commissioner Joseph Fields does have his hand raised. And so commissioners, if you think about that, I'm going to um, yield the floor to and recognize Commissioner Fields. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. My basic question is, what what's going to be placed in this particular area? You know, is it a building, or you know, what kind of building? You know, what is it going to be used for? What's this space being used for? That's my question. Okay, what is the use of the building, Mr. Buckley or Director Smith? Is it a bank? It, it is a bank, Mr. Chair. Currently, the uh, the existing building on the site is a multi-tenant retail building with only one tenant. The other tenant spaces are vacant. We would like to demolish that building and to replace it with a new Wells Fargo Bank branch. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it seems to me that if it's going to be a bank, you need a you need more than one entrance and egress uh, for for uh, access by the public. But you want to uh, get a variance from those requirements. So I'm trying to figure out how that's going to work. What are you going to do? Well, we have already um, uh, gotten Wells Fargo's approval of the site plan that is before you, as well as the elevations. And so Wells Pardon Fargo me. has already they've already confirmed that they are uh, satisfied with the single access point from Cleveland Avenue. Okay, um, Commissioner Fields, is your question more in line is, does the single access point meet the requirements of the city? Is that really your question or? Yes, that's okay. my question. Okay, and um, that's what I was thinking. And I believe that um, those things will get approved as it continues to go through site development by various departments. Um, I think public safety to make sure that there's proper ingress and egress and turning radius and all of those things. Um, is that correct, Director Smith? That is correct. It has to go through our technical review committee. Okay, so those things will be fleshed out if there are challenges or if there's a condition that does not meet the city's requirements, Commissioner Fields. Okay, thank you, Ali, I yield back. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other comments, questions, or concerns? 
Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Fan. As you have um, eloquently stated in terms of the conditions, um, what are we going to move forward? And I'll um, retain my second so okay. we can move so we can move to the motion that needs to be on the floor. Got you. Thank you. So, Commissioner Fan, um, I will just restate that just so that I am correct and so that the record will reflect that Commissioner Fan has withdrawn his second. Is that correct, Commissioner Fan? That is correct, Mr. Chair. All right. Um, is there any other second? Hearing none, the motion dies for lack of a second. Commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion um, for this agenda item 2023 is <coughs> in Victor 002 03. And it might help us in this process if, um, Director okay. Smith, do you know if you or anyone on your team has worked on in this meeting, since we've been discussing this, um, wordsmithing or rewording these conditions so that this body may um, have a motion and vote on this based on the discussion that we just had? My recommendation on wordsmithing is to is to add to be provided to staff um, at the end of the sentence. Unfortunately, I believe that Ms. Solomon is having some type of technical difficulties and can't retype it on the screen as we speak. Don't we have a couple of other other planners that can help her out? Yeah. Um, yeah. So could we get Mr. Singletary or Mr. Bush? Um, if you guys have heard um, our discussion reg re regarding those conditions. Um, um, here. I am getting a chat from Commissioner Fields um, while someone is working on that. Okay, um, I would like for the record to reflect that we have been joined by Commissioner Mark Fields. Commissioner Mark Fields, could you please unmute so that our court reporter can hear your voice and reflect that you are present this evening? If you would just sound here. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, we've been joined by Commissioner Fields. Commissioner Fields, we're on um, case number 2022 via in Victor 002 03. It's 874 Cleveland Avenue. And we are in the process of revising some conditions so that we may dispose of this case. Um, if you can put the conditions back up, and if someone can, um, let's see here. Okay. If we can say, um, Staff recommends approval of the following conditions um, to approve to approve landscape plan and lighting plan to show enhanced landscaping around signage resembling around signage to approve landscape and lighting plan to show enhanced landscaping. Around signs resembling um, to provide uh, to provide <clears throat> to provide a landscape plan and lighting plan to show hands. Okay, number one, um, who's typing? Miss Solomon, is that you? Who's typing? Okay, I didn't hear you. Um, I didn't see you. Okay, let's go to number one, Ms. Solomon. That might be easier. Let's say to provide landscape plan and lighting plan to show enhanced landscaping around signage resembling uh, around signage, um, which shall be approved by staff. And I want to actually word that a little differently. To provide landscape plan and lighting plan, comma, which shall be approved by staff, comma, to show enhanced landscaping around signage.
Okay, so take this, the bottom half off? Yes. Okay. And let's go back to the front. And you know what? It seems like you're on the microscope, so just relax and we'll get through it. It's okay. <laughs> Everything is fine. To provide landscape plan and lighting plan, comma, which shall be approved by staff, comma, to show enhanced landscaping around signage, period. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, number two, to provide proper documentation reflecting the base should be composed of, okay. Um, to reflect. To provide proper documentation. Um, let's, 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 okay, let's go to the beginning. Building envelope. Shall include, and we're going to go back to put ing on build. So building envelope shall include a mixture of the following building materials and you can put a colon and we can say masonry and then take all the other stuff out and go to masonry brick and natural stone um and do we have percentages or a mixture or um, and Mr. Buckley, I'm going to ask you this question as well. You did say that there is a rendering of the building that has been approved by Wells Fargo. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. And that rendering that has been approved by Wells Fargo, what are the building materials? The building materials are um, a textured concrete masonry unit. Uh, material. There is also um, uh, stucco and metal uh, decorative accent elements. Okay. Before you list all of those, this might be faster. Can you email that to either Ms. Solomon or Director Smith? I would like for this body to have the benefit of seeing the rendering that has been approved by Wells Fargo, because then we may just reference that rendering versus shooting in the dark, trying to figure out what the building materials will be. Absolutely, they will have that momentarily. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner. Could we table this matter and, and come back to it and move forward while they're waiting to get that? I want to move it. Let's table this and then just come back to it while they're working on that information that you, you're requesting. Okay. And um, and we will also reword uh, condition number three so that it states that it will reflect the requirements of the Cleveland Avenue overlay, reflect and meet all the requirements of the Cleveland overlay district. So I hope that you have that, Ms. Solomon. Okay. We're going to table this. Um, um Go ahead with the motion. A motion is the table that we can get a second and then we'll come back to it. Absolutely. Second. Okay, it's been moved second. by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Joseph Fields that we table yes. this item and come back to this item after we've heard our case at Camp Creek, which is the last case here. Commissioners, our next agenda item is 2022 U as an umbrella 002 01. The applicant is Scott Trimble. The address is 1669 Neely Avenue. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item and your recommendation? Here, in reference to case number three. Excuse me, Chairman, in reference to item number three, case number 2022U-002-01, the applicant, Scott Trimmel, property located at 1669 Neely Avenue. The applicant is seeking a special use permit to convert a garage into a livable loft space. Case type is a special use permit, and this item was deferred from the regular meeting on May 19th, 2022. Okay, staff, would you please send your recommendation? Thank you. 
the chairman staff has recommended approval and they must comply condition they must comply with section 10-2130 habitable accessory structure okay thank you um commissioners you've heard staff's recommendation for case number 2022 using umbrella-002-01 applicant scott okay. trimble um, as this is a special use permit, this body is not the final arbiter. Your motion shall be in the form of a recommendation. At this time, I'll entertain the motion. Mr. Chair, I, rec I make a motion that we recommend approval of the application. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Joseph Bill, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that this body recommends the approval of case number 2022, using umbrella-002-01. Address is 1669 Neely Avenue. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. This body recommends approval. Thank you, Mr. Trimble. Our next agenda item is 2022, R as in Robert, Z as in 0 001-03. The applicant is Dr. Ifatayo. Ojalade, the address is 2538 Stone Road. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item and your recommendation? Chairman, in reference to item number three, case number 2022 RZ 001 03, Dr. Dr. Infatayo is the applicant, and the property is located at 2538 Stone Road. The applicant is seeking a rezoning property uh, to rezone the property from RL to MI to establish a psychology office. The case type is a rezoning and the applicant has made a request for deferral and staff is recommending deferral as well. Okay, commissioners, you've heard um, from staff that the applicant has made a request to defer. Staff is also recommending to defer case number 2022, ours and Robert, Z as in Zebra, dash 001, dash 03. Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion. And before I do that, actually, uh, Director Smith, is there a time certain for the deferral? Is it an indefinite deferral or is it a deferral to our regularly scheduled July meeting? It is indefinite at this point, sir. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion. Let us not all speak at once. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve staff's uh, recommend, recommendation for deferral. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Fan, that this body defers case number 2022, R's and Robert, Z's and Zebra, dash 001, dash 03. Any comments, questions, or concerns? Question. Question, Mr. Chair. Question. Commissioner Fan, you have the floor, and then we'll go to Commissioner Joseph Fields. Okay, my question is if this is a a deferral, indefinite deferral? What's the difference between an indefinite referral and a withdrawal? Staff, would you like to respond to that or um, Ms. Wiggins? I, I would I'd rather hear from the attorney. Ms. Wiggins, would you, would you explain that to us, the difference between an indefinite uh, deferral and a, uh, a, uh, a, withdrawal. a withdrawal? And in addition to that, would you also let us know how many times a person can defer um, something before we act on it? Yes, sir. Um, and I'd let the chairman know I'm at a training right now. So I heard some of your question and I believe I heard that you wanted to know how many times someone can defer and the difference between an indefinite deferral versus a deferral with some sunset date. Is that accurate? Withdrawal. I mean, not 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 sunset date, but a withdrawal. What's the deal between a withdrawal and an and an indefinite deferral? What's so let me certainly. So if someone withdraws their application, they would certainly need to reapply, and we would not treat it as a deferral. We would treat it as a new application, a first impression that the the chair the board, the commissioners have never heard before, and that the staff would need to reevaluate with the new application, okay? We would need to re advertise for public hearing. We would start it from scratch like a new case. A deferral, however, would be that we are putting off decision on the application to a later date. Maybe it's to get some more information, 
maybe there needs to be some changes done to the staff report. But I will say that there's case law that says that if you have the public hearing, like in January, and you don't make a decision on the case without having another public hearing, say like in May, that's too far. The public should be heard in a time that's pretty close to the decision so that the board who's ever making the decision hasn't forgotten the insight or the will of the public. So we should not defer, 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 you know, um, repetitively so as to not be in violation of case law. Yes. But because I, I'm just trying to figure out how can we do it indefinite. Uh, I think that, Mr. Chair and members of the um, commission, we need to set a time in terms of uh, how long we're going to defer this case before we hear it again, as opposed to using the word indefinite refer deferral. That's, that's, thank you, Ms. Wiggins, for clarification. Thank okay. Um, we we'll now hear from Commissioner Joseph Fields. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm also concerned about this indefinite request for referral. Um, I was reading the statutes, you know, in, in the past, and I believe I ran across a section that says a deferral can only be made for 30 days until the next the next session. Um, so I'm I'm in a disagreement with a, a, an indefinite uh, referral. As a matter of fact, I'd make, like to make a different motion that we deny the request in the first place because the request for rezoning that one building and trying to make it into you know, as, as a district, it's, it's not a district, it's just one house, one building, which I've seen as a matter of fact, it's down the street from where I live and there's nothing there but that building, which the, the, uh, the applicant des uh, described to us earlier that it was a woodworking shop. You know, it looks like, a, you know, it's in a residential area. Everything is residential along that section of Stone Road. Commissioner yeah, Fields, if I could, if I could just interrupt you for one second. So yes, we will have to have your comments to speak directly to the motion. And I believe that you're now speaking to the merits of the case. And that is why we have to have a motion so that we can keep the comments and the meeting on track because then we can go ahead and deliberate this and the motion is not to approve or to deny. The motion is to defer. So we would have to have your comments to speak to the motion. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So there is at this moment, a motion made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that this body defers indefinitely. Commissioner Fan has raised some concerns about the indefinite um, deferral as have Commissioner Fields. And so Commissioner Fan, um, would you like to withdraw your second? I'm going to withdraw my second. Uh, and I'm going to make a substitute motion, Mr. Okay. Chair, if I'm in order. Okay. So at the moment, the motion does not have a second. And so now I will yield the floor to I'll recognize Commissioner Fan. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I will make a motion uh, to deny um this applicant um application okay. my motion is to deny okay so second um, okay um we've got and a motion it. and one second please uh miss wiggins has raised her hand to be recognized miss wiggins thank you mr chairman um just be uh on notice that a motion to deny could potentially prohibit the applicant from coming back before you for a period of time um so that may not be the intended um impact of the motion to deny um if you guys want to hear this at a later date okay Thank you. Can I just ask Ms. Wiggins a question and say something? Based on what you had just shared with us, if if we move to deny, then she can come back at a later date. The only thing I'm trying to do is to make sure that we don't have it indefinite out there in terms of um, a denial. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to fix it. Well, she, I'm not trying to stop her or uh, her project, but I'm just trying to make sure that we're doing what we can do legally in terms of 
deferral. Now, if you can make a, a suggestion as to what we can do to accommodate that, I would appreciate it. Uh, and I would also make move to that motion. But but right now, I thought that that would be the proper thing to do because she could still come back at a later date. I think I, I think it what. Uh, six months or so that she can come back or so and reapply again. But I just, just if you could give me a suggestion as to what we can do to to do this and and still be helpful to to the applicant. So, Commissioner Fan, the body could actually make a deferral to our regular scheduled July meeting. Right. And so then that would not be indefinite. Um, I so there are a couple of things with. Um, I, I agree. I would not want to penalize the applicant in any kind of way um, mm -hmm. who is seeking a deferral. I think that this body can clean that up and we can just make a deferral for a time certain. And that time certain could be the will of this body if it's going to be at our regular scheduled July meeting, if it's going to be at our regular scheduled August meeting. When, as um, Attorney Wiggins has mentioned, it once we do the denial, once we do the denial, um, then there is a time period that the applicant not come back before this body. And then I also believe that the applicant would have to reapply. So there are cost implications to that as well. So again, I don't think our intent is to penalize the applicant to that extent. I think that we would like to have some structure and clarity around the time certain for the deferral. And so if that is the case, then if you were to make a motion to defer to our regularly scheduled July meeting or our regularly scheduled August meeting, um, and it got a second and that was passed, then those would be the time periods for which we have approved the deferral. Uh, that they, and, 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 and with that clarification, Mr. Chair, I would say uh, my motion then will be to defer until our August meeting and that should give her at least uh, two months to have uh, things in order to bring back to us. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. Is there a second to Commissioner Fan's motion to defer this case to our regularly scheduled August meeting? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner McKnight. Um, and now we've got two hands. We've got Director Smith <laughs> and uh, Ms. Wiggins in that order. Um, Chairman, I just want to make make a clarification that if this body chose to uh, deny this case this evening, it would be a recommendation and then the case would move forward to the city council. That is correct. Um, and that is absolutely correct because it is a special use permit. Um, and Attorney Wiggins, I'm recognizing you. Um, Director Smith, yes. if you could please lower your hand. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Attorney Wiggins. Mr. Chairman, I would just ask for the record if it's been okay. We're so losing original motion to deny. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now, sir? I can hear you now. Okay. Whoever seconded Miss Commissioner Fan's initial motion to deny, withdraw oh, yes. that second so he can be properly have this new motion. Yes, I forgot that there was a second. Um, I withdraw. Okay, Commissioner Joseph Fields withdraws. Thank you so much. I forgot that there was a second to that. Okay. And so now that that is withdrawn, Commissioner Fan, um, would you restate your motion regarding a deferral to the regularly scheduled August? Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, I want to make a motion that we defer this uh, application until our August meeting. Uh, okay. And uh, Commissioner McKnight, would you please resound your second? Second. Okay. Moved by um, Attorney Wiggins, you still have your hand raised. Would you still like to be recognized? I, okay, it looks like she's lowered her hand. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Ignite, that this body defers case number. Um, let me go back up. Off. Case number 2022 R's and Robert Z's and 0 001 03 to a regularly scheduled August meeting. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner McKnight. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. This item is deferred to our regularly scheduled August meeting. 
<laughs> Next agenda item is 2022 U as an umbrella dash 001 and dash 04 and 2022 V as in Victor C as in Charles as 001 dash 04. The applicant is Mike Vale uh, and public storage. And the location is 3291-3271-3261 Camp Creek. Um, staff, would you please sound the caption and your recommendation for this agenda item? Chairman, in reference to item number five, case number 2022U-001-04, 2022VC-001-04. The applicant is Mike Bell, public storage. The property is located at 3291. 3271 and 3261 Camp Creek Parkway. The applicant seeks a special use permit to expand existing public storage facility. The applicant also seeking a concurrent variance for a separation from other self-storage parking uses, parking and loading. Case type is a special use permit with a concurrent variance. This case was deferred from the May 19th, 2022 meeting. Staff has recommended denial. Okay. Um, do you want to expound on that, Director Smith? Um, oh, yes, sir. Um, staff has recommended denial of this petition. Um, there does not seem to be any evidence of uh, topographical issues that would prevent the applicant or owner from following the requirements of the ordinance, a self storage multi requirements as well as section 10-2154 for off-street parking and loading area layout, construction and maintenance. Okay, commissioners, you've heard the recommendation from staff regarding case number 2022U as an umbrella, dash 001-04, and 2022V as in Victor C as in Charles as 001-04. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to accept staff recommendation for denial. Okay, um, is that a recommendation? For that That's motion? a recommendation. That's a recommendation to accept staff. Okay, thank you. Recommendation for denial. Okay, um, there's a motion to recommend denial um, made by Commissioner Fan. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner <laughs> Bryant. This body recommends denial. Any comments, questions, or concerns? I do have a question. Uh, okay, Commissioner Joseph Fields, you are recognized. Um, I've, I've, I, I kind of understand what they're trying to do. They want to go up three stories from their base, uh, one-story building, and spread out a little bit uh, within the area that they described to us at the last meeting. I've seen storages. <clears throat> If it goes up three stories, I can understand. I've seen down on, on 16th Street, there's a storage facility similar to what I understand this one might be. And it's five stories and doesn't seem to interfere with anything. You can see it from the, from the expressway coming south on uh, Highway 80, Interstate 80. <clears throat> so I don't see how that would interfere with anything by having it built. So I, I would recommend that we, you know, we, we approve this. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Fields. Commissioner Joseph Fields, are there any other comments, questions, or concerns? Okay, I will speak. Um, Ms. Solomon, can you please go back to the slide of the staff's denial? Okay, so um, staff, I would like to ask you to unpack this a little bit. That is why I was asking for Director Smith to expound on this. So it says that there does not seem to be any evidence of topographical issues that will prevent the applicant or the owner from following the requirements of the zoning ordinance section 10-2142. Um, so can you speak to the to topographical issues that the applicant presented 
um, and why staff saw that that was not an issue. You on mute. In reference to the topographical issues, I don't have um, any additional comments. Um, I might let staff speak on that. But in reference to the section of our zoning ordinance that has the distance requirements um, for self storage facilities, um, this particular area has multiple self storage facilities in the area. And so for that reason, um, staff would not be able to recommend approval because they were already within the limit of what would be allowed based on the distance requirements set forth in our zoning ordinance. Um, I'm not sure if um, Mr. Singletary would like to speak on the topographical issues. Um, I need, I, I do need someone to speak on the topographical issues because it is a part of the recommendation. It's a part of the supporting documentation or the reasoning for the recommendation from denial. So if there could be someone from the team to speak on that. Yes, Mr. Chair, this is um, Troy John Singletary speaking. Um, so I did the recommendation with uh, my colleague, Ms. Taylor Solomon. And so based off our um, review, um, we did that we did not see any, because um, the applicant was trying to get a variant as well for the parking requirements. And that is why um, we recommend the AD now, simply because we did not see any type of issues regarding any trees, um, dirt, anything of that nature that would prevent the applicant from being in compliance when it comes to the parking islands or the parking requirements, which is why we mentioned the uh, typographic um, concerns, but we didn't see any um, thing that would stop that, let's say the applicant from being in compliance with um, the code stated for the parking. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, so I've heard two things. One, Director Smith, you mentioned the proliferation of storage units within what, which would then be different from the topographical issues, but that was not a part of the, the documentation or the rationale for the denial. But we'll come back to that. So um, as it relates to the parking, um, the applicant was requesting a reduction in parking, correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, now the applicant was requesting a reduction in parking from what to what? Um, at this moment, I do not recall the exact number. Um, Mr. Brent, can you respond to that, please? Yes, sir. This is uh, Brett Buckland um, uh, representing Bowler and Public Storage. Our uh, located at 651 Caligny Court in Sandy Springs. Um, the uh, requested parking reduction was from a required uh, 53 parking spaces um, down to a provided 21 parking spaces. And uh, Mr. Buckland, what is the basis for that request? Staff is stating that there are no topographical issues that would prevent public storage from meeting that threshold of 53 parking spaces. I am assuming that public storage and your team uh, would refute that, is that correct? I would say there are some topographical uh, concerns. There is a 12 to 15 foot tall retaining wall along the um, Eastern property line. Um, but there is also just a space limitation um, for this property. Um, we have, you know, in order to meet the loading space requirement, um, we have, which we have provided, um, that limits our ability to meet the parking requirements. Um, and then also uh, public storage being, um, you know, the largest self-storage provider has, um, you know, done a market analysis here to determine that the provided parking should be adequate for their um, anticipated clientele for this uh, facility. Okay, that's public storage's assessment, correct? That is correct. Okay, unfortunately, public storage <laughs> is not in a position to make that. Um, so we will disregard that, but I appreciate you stating that. Something um, my mind was just triggered here. I believe, and please correct me if I am incorrect, I believe that Mr. Buckland and Ms. Walker were not present at our May meeting. Is that correct? Because we, when, we we had this, when, we, when we deferred this, when we deferred this and had a public hearing, 
you all did not have an opportunity to present. Is that correct? You presented at work session, but I don't believe that you were at the meeting when this item was deferred. We were um, at, at both. Did you present? At, yeah. Okay. And you have the, the images that show that retaining wall and the space limitations and all of that, because I don't recall that being brought up. We had, we had not discussed that particular aspect. The um, topographical concerns had not been brought up at the time because there was no staff report available. Um, the staff report was just provided to us within the last couple of days. Um, we did not know that that was a concern um, of staff. Okay. So when that was when you were made aware of that by staff, was there an engagement with staff about your assessment that there is in fact some topographical issues, or did you just say, okay, thanks? We like I said, I'm actually out on paternity leave right now, so I'm um, just kind of jumped in to help this. Sean, you want to go ahead and jump in? Yes, Ms. Walker. Um, yes, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Sure. I did respond to Ms. Solomon's email that shared the information with the staff's comments. That was just my acknowledgement that we were in receipt of the comments, but it was no way indication to address any comments directly. Um, I thought that we were gonna have an opportunity to discuss that today. And again, I had no idea about the flow of this meeting today. I thought we were gonna go back to the presentation and we can reiterate um, just our expansion, what PS Public Storage is attempting to do and to answer any questions that you all may have about our operations and how we plan to improve upon this, this location. Um, this, is, this, is, uh, this is news to me for okay. this today. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walker, for that. And um, people will say a lot of things about Sean Atkins, but what they will not say is that he is not fair. And I believe that your assessment is fair and or, or, or your concerns are fair. And so I do not recall a conversation about the topographical issues at this site, okay? And because I don't recall that, um, I have not discussed that. I don't know if any of my fellow commissioners have discussed that or know about that. And so we have had the public hearing for this. However, I will give you an opportunity to present those issues because you're requesting quite a drastic reduction in parking. Staff says that there is no topographical concerns. And according to Mr. Buckland, there are. And so I would like to see exactly what the challenges are on the site and why public storage is finding it difficult to um, meet the threshold of the required 53 parking spaces, okay? So at this time, um, I am asking staff to either um, allow Ms. Walker or Mr. Buckland the ability to share screen. Thank you, Ms. Buckland. So here is the retaining wall that is along our eastern property line. Um, you can see there's it's approximately, I think, 12 to 15 feet tall. Um, and so this is a limitation there. These are some of the existing site photos. Um, the retaining wall is located approximately um, adjacent to this guardrail right here. And then it drops off down to the adjacent property there. Um, and then there is also a fairly significant topographic drop down in this rear area, um, as well as back in here towards the existing um, <coughs> self storage facility right there. Okay. Um, Mr. Bucklett, thank you for sharing that with me. And this is what I'll say. Um, the photos are lovely. I appreciate it. But what I can't see is I cannot see a site plan that shows that you're not able to accommodate the parking, okay, um, for those reasons. And is it that you cannot accommodate the parking because you want a larger footprint 
Um, so I'm not sure. So if you can walk me through the site plan. And the other thing that I will also say, there's a motion on the floor made by Commissioner Fan and seconded by, I'm lost, who seconded this? Commissioner Bryant. And Commissioner Bryant seconded, okay, to, to recommend denial. And um, there are a couple of other questions that I would have of staff and commissioners, there's a motion to deny, but I'm almost feeling like this case may need to be deferred. I just would like to hear, um, that is one of the reasons why I asked staff to expound on the reasoning for denial. Um, and so I would just like to hear that those, those reasons, and I don't know if we're prepared to do that tonight, um, or if staff is prepared, or if the applicant is prepared to do that this evening. But those are my concerns. I will go with the will of the body, but I did want to state my concerns on this because I want staff, first of all, when you're going to present a denial, particularly to this body, um, to simply say that staff recommends denial without giving us any information, without being prodded, I'm going to find that unacceptable. I would like for this body to understand staff's expertise and um, it's, it's educated reasoning behind a denial. Um, and so I'm not sure if I am satisfied with all of those things this <laughs> evening. Um, I wanna be fair to the applicant and I also wanna respect staff's opinion on this. And I think that both sides should have an opportunity to present those things, which I do not think that I've heard. And perhaps I'm the only one, but I don't feel comfortable with that. The motion on the floor is to recommend denial. Um, if this body should like to move forward with that, um, we can go ahead and dispose of that motion. If not, then we can entertain another motion. And um, I would like to also ask if there's anything that I have not covered, um, if Ms., uh, if our attorney Wiggins could opine, um, I just wanna make sure that we've heard from both sides sufficiently before this body makes um, takes action. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I think you guys have heard from both bodies. My only concern is that the applicants are presenting new information that the public has not had an opportunity to respond to whether or not uh, what you mentioned initially, um, a deferral with a re-advertisement of a public hearing, provided that there is new information uh, regarding this retaining wall and the topography issues that the public has not been able to opine on. Okay. All right. So, um, commissioners, you've heard also from attorney Wiggins regarding that and this information regarding the retaining wall and the staff's inability to respond to that because it, it's new to us. It is clearly new to me. Um, again, a motion is to recommend denial made by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner Bryant. This body would like to move forward with that. I'll call the question. If the body would like to change their motion, I'm happy to entertain that as well. So are there any other comments, questions, or concerns? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Joseph Phillips, uh, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't think that they actually outlined exactly what this new structure is going to look like, and the various um, the, the various scales uh, of the of the project itself. So if they could do that and show where the parking is, or where the parking should be. So if, if there's no topographical reason why they can't provide the 53 spaces, I think uh, they should provide the 53 spaces so to be in compliance with the ordinance. Um, I wouldn't want to um, say not providing that. That's, that's a big drop from 53 to 21 spaces, as, as well as being able to actually service their clientele, where everybody's going to park when they come there. You're going to ask for, you're asking for an, a three-story building so I'm sure the capacity is going to be increased. So they're going to have to have capacity to serve, to serve that increased business. So I'd like to see that laid out and described and why can't they do that? Um, I saw the pictures, but I don't see that 
that hindrance in relationship to the new structure. So I'd like to see something like that and explain, explain it. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Fields. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Okay, Mr. Buckland or Mr. or Ms. Walker, would you like to respond to Commissioner Fields' questions or concerns? Yes, this is Ms. Walker representing public storage. Again, we'll be more than happy to outline any material that's requested today. We'd appreciate if we had the opportunity to compile that information and respond appropriately to the, pro to the comments and questions today, as well as to the comments posed in the staff report. We did. Also, I'm, so I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Also, I see in this. Um, Hold on one second, this. Commissioner Fields. Just one yes. second. I had yielded the floor to Ms. Walker, and then I will recognize you. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Walker. Thank you. So in response to the topographical matters that was posed by staff, and today we were trying to address that. It appears the information we have on the screen may or may not be sufficient for the commissioner's use to be able to respond, but we'll be more than happy to compile additional documentation on traffic generation and or the hardship that may or may not be created by this plan. So whatever the commissioner's desire is, we'll be happy to address just if we can get the opportunity to do so. We certainly appreciate it. Brett, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Mr. Buckland? No, nothing else. Um, thanks, Sean covered it pretty well. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Fields, I recognize you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, if we can clarify those intentions and with, the, with the, uh, a better layout of the plan so that we can clearly see why you can't accommodate the 53 parking spaces. Okay. Because I know that's essential for an expanded uh, storage unit. You have to have parking. People come in, they have to have some place to work. So, okay. uh, thank you. All right. Thank you Bye so you. much, Commissioner Fields. Any other comments, questions, or concerns from the commission? Mr. Chair, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to okay. uh, revisit deferring this until the uh, July meeting. Would we need to do a uh, would we need to do a whole uh, public hearing again with this? How would that work? Okay, um, we can advertise for a public hearing because there is new information um, regarding um, retaining walls and topographical issues, and so I would want to make sure that we're meeting the statutory requirement, but we're also giving the public an opportunity to come before this body to address their concerns around this new information. Um, so we absolutely can do that. Um, Commissioner Mark Fields, I believe I saw your hand. Is there something that you would also like to say? But first, Commissioner Miller, did I respond to your question adequately? You responded very adequately, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Mark Fields, I think I saw your hand. Is there something that you'd like to say? Well, um, it was just answered. My question was, what would it need to be? Uh, what would need to happen in, as far as another public hearing because of all this new information? Okay. Thank you. So commissioners, at the moment, there is a motion on the floor to recommend denial. That motion was made by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Bryant. So we must first dispose of that motion. And so I can call the question and we can vote that motion up or down. If that motion passes, then this application would still move forward to city council because this body is not the final arbiter. This is a special use permit. If that motion fails, at that time, I can entertain a motion, and if it's the will of the body, to defer this to our regularly scheduled July meeting, and that gets a second, and then I'll call the question for that, and then we can vote that up or down. So at this time, there's a motion on the floor made by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Bryant, that this body recommends denial. All in favor, sound aye. Commissioner, Commissioner, uh, before we move to the motion, if yes, you would. Commissioner. Uh, what I'll do is, is in the spirit of uh, fairness, uh, because we definitely want to be fair with everybody, I will definitely um, withdraw my motion if the Senate will withdraw his motion so we can move to the deferral to the, uh, to the August meeting. 
Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. Commissioner Bryant. Commissioner Fan. I agree. I agree with that. With okay. what Commissioner Fan just said, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And you withdraw your second, correct? Right. I I withdraw my second. Okay. Commissioners, the motion and the second has been withdrawn. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I recommend. Mr. Chairman, I um, move that we defer this particular item to our July meeting. Okay. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Joseph Fields, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that this body defers this agenda item to our regularly scheduled July meeting. Are there any comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Um, this item is deferred to our regularly scheduled July meeting. Commissioners will now pull off the table a motion, I'll entertain a motion to pull off the table agenda item 2022 via Zinvictor-002-03. The address is 874 Cleveland Avenue. Uh, Attorney Wiggins, do we need a motion to pull this off the table? Is that correct? Yeah, I'm gonna make a motion that we bring uh, back this item for the discussion that was tabled. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. It's moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Miller, that we pull from the table for discussion and action 2022 via Zim Victor 002 03, addresses 874 Cleveland Avenue. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Okay. Um, where we left off, we were working on conditions. Ms. Solomon, have you been able to pull those together? I got a thumbs up. Great, let's see what this says. Um, number one, to provide, to provide landscape plan and lighting plan when shall be approved by staff to show enhanced landscaping around signage. Number two, building envelope shall include a mixture of the following building materials, masonry, brick, and natural stone as resembling rendering provided to staff. And number three, building shall reflect and comply with Article C, Cleveland Overlay District. Commissioners, do you have any additions, edits, comments, questions um, regarding the conditions? Okay, if there are none, at this time I'll entertain a motion for 2022 via Zen Victor 002 03. Mr. Chair, I'm in the uh, case number 2022 V 002 03. I make a motion that we approve with staff conditions as stated. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Fan, that this body um, approves case number 2022 via as in Victor-002-03 with the conditions as stated and provided by staff. And are there any comments, questions, or concerns? Hearing none, all in favor sound yes. aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The motion carries. The application is approved. Mr. Buckley. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Now let's go back to announcements. Director Smith, do you have any announcements for the good of the body? I do not. Okay. Uh, commissioners, do you have any announcements? Mr. Chair, Patricia Lovett here, Commissioner Lovett. Just want to remind everybody that Friday, 5 o'clock, is the last day for early voting. Thank so we'll you go so to East Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Lovett. Thank you. Any other announcements for the good of the body? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to, motion adjourn. to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Joseph Fields, seconded by Commissioner Miller, that we adjourn our regularly scheduled June meeting. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none of the ayes have it. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful Juneteenth weekend celebration. And we will see you here next week. Same to you. Day, same back time, same back place. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Ms. Wiggins. Thank you so much.